two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Hey, and welcome to What's on Tap podcast. Uh, your host for your source, not host, your source for uh, beer drinking in Sweden. That is true. You or, are one of the hosts. I am one of the And hosts. the show is a vessel for us. It is. Yes. It to, is. To, to get our ramblings across. Hi, I'm Martin, your uh, co-host. I'm Stefan. And ramblings indeed. And uh, speaking of other people like to ramble, we're joined by, uh, I guess, our third co-host at this point, uh, Pontus. Hi, guys. Because he's, uh, he's been on several. I think he's our new... He... Yeah, he's the new The new most, uh, most often guest. I mean, Matthias is still on third place. True, true, um, true. But Pontus is definitely on fourth place for well, appearances. Well, to, to be fair, Matthias was the original co-host. So. I, just, I just wanted to get in that I, I think I passed him. Yes, you have. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. just wanted to get that yeah, on yeah, the record. Yeah. So and I also get the record that I have passed Bjorn now by like two or three episodes, finally. Yeah, that's, why, that's why you're uh, fourth place. <laughs> but even more fun, we are not at any of our uh, apartments today. No, we no, are we out are. out and about. We are. This is, feels really weird. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> because the show is called What's on Tap. The 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 kind of weird part is we didn't ask, well, hey, what's on tap? Because the place we're at has recently become untapped verified. So yes. we don't have to ask. We no, have all no, the no. knowledge at our fingertips. It's so great. And so uh, in Malmo, there has been there's always been two bishops' arms uh, for the, like the last eight years at least. <clears throat> and the for the longest time, it was Bishop Arms Savoy was the better of the two. Uh, this one was never. This we're at Bishop's Arms Gustav Storg today, and this is never the a bad one, but the one near the train station, the Savoy, was always the better one. And then they've had some change in management in both locations, I think. And the one in Savoy is just kind of like falling off a cliff into the depths of mediocrity. And uh, Bishop's Arms Gustav Storg has become the premier beer bar in. Almost all, Skåne. I mean, it yeah. is amazing. I would, I would even say it's one of the best ones in Sweden, even, when it yeah. comes to the, like, the assortment of beers. Like, they are the only bar in Europe who's actually managed to get garagist meads on keg. Yeah, and, we, and we'll get there. But I want to uh, counterpoint one thing. Yes. I would say that as soon as Bishop Arms Gustav Adolf's store, this one, opened, it has always been better than Savoy. From the first uh, moment it opened. I, I would argue that the Rob years, it was, yeah, Savoy uh, was better. I would agree, because they had a real nice cellar with lots of old lambics. Yeah, yeah, I, I Martin, would say... you remember when we started first of drinking, when we were hanging out at Savoy a lot? When yeah. we got to go to the cellar and pick bottles there? Yes, yeah. those bottles were nice, but the tap selection never held its own to this bar. Well, because they have more taps here. Yeah, so it's, true. I mean, just by yes. sheer selection, they've always had more. But I would say but Savoy, there was a good two or three years there where Savoy was having better taps. Or you would find some of those rarer beers you weren't getting anywhere else at the time that were considered rare. And still, I kept going to this place and not to Savoy. So there's there's something going on there. I mean, Martin, that's because you love Maya. I, I do love the, <laughs> I, I've always loved the staff here. I think they're good. The staff here is amazing. Yes. Uh, they're, they're hands down the best staff in any bar in what? Beardish is, Beard, Beard is really, really great too. Beardish is our is our second best bar, but, uh, but, beer bar. <laughs> before I let this topic go, so I, I back then I used to work like thirty meters from Bishop's Savoy. Yeah, and we, me and my, I, I made my colleagues beer nerds, like Hannes Gruber of Nerd Brewing fame. I made him a beer nerd there at that employment. And we went to Bishop's Savoy so often. Then this place opened. Yeah. And we just stopped going to Savoy instantly because from the moment this place started, it was better. And we walked the long way to get to so here. It's funny because I used to go to Savoy first and then I would come here second. Huh, that... yeah, but Martin, I know why it was that because they had like a so small assortment and rotation of kegs over at Savoy compared yes. to here. Yes. Because uh, at Savoy you, have, you had, or you had at least, the better bottle selection. Because yeah, they, they, had, they, had, they had a deeper cellar there with lots of old Lambic and that kind of stuff. Because here, you have a nice rotation of kegs and also always something new to try. If you go to Savoy, they don't have that rotation of people, that amount of people. Is like the keg, the keg rotation there is underwhelming. And it's always been like that. Yeah. So, so we kind of semi-agree with everything yeah. we're, we're saying. Yeah. Uh, so back to this place, which has gotten better and better like the past few years, but just recently 
just take, taken a huge step upwards. Yeah, it was like the beginning of summer this year. They really yeah. like, you know, flipped a switch and just went from being like really good to being outstanding. I would say it was due when uh, Alan got promoted to be the head of uh, Bears, more or less. Yeah, to purchase, like, yes, to like the acquisition. He, like, exactly, because he usually just worked in the bar, more or less, but now he gets the promotion, so he's the head of... And he's been that for, uh, I think, the last year, even. Yeah. Because that and was when they started getting the ref and those kind of Bears. Yeah, that's so when we got a lot more track and overtone, and there were some... Uh, a lot more selective beer tastings they've had over the past year. Yeah, and the first uh, beer that we're soon going to try, that brewery, I started trying a lot here first. Okay. Yeah. We'll get to the beer soon. But so a lot of these yeah, brands that you actually want to go to a bar to try and not yeah. just they happen to be at the bar that you went to for other reasons. Yeah, and there's a, a huge turnover here on, on the kegs. It's, it's kind of crazy because um, I know like just like two weeks ago, I tried everything on tap and now half the taps are new and I'm like, shit. <laughs> and also say, like, they also got a really nice event here since the turnover, more or less, because you remember earlier this year when we had the Tilkin Fruits Stravaganza? Yeah. Right. That's the one of two bars in Sweden, but we were the only one here who had a full keg list. And that's, again, thanks to Alan, right? Yep. Yes. And, and that was 12 different Tilkin beers on tap. On tap, yeah. yeah. At the same time. Yeah, that's insane. And <laughs> Alan made this bar a uh, Drifontainen, like, friend associate bar. Yeah. So there's, yeah, for the spellings. Th there's like, spelling find a lot here for purchase now. They're a little bit expensive, but you yeah. wouldn't find it's them. It's going to be, like, 70 euros, 70 dollars, something like that per bottle. Yeah, yeah or even and more. Secret but information, yeah. there's soon going to be an official, or Sweden's first official, Malmö bar as well. Oh, wow. So, Alan, I guess, is the one who got uh, Garagist Mead on tap here, which right. was yes. Europe's only ke uh, keg of that particular mead. And it's still on, it's still on tap here at the, at the time of this recording. Yes. And uh, if you look at their on-deck list, I think there's something like 10 more coming soon. So. That are probably just going to replace that, that tap. <laughs> tap. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's, it's, it's so amazing. Yeah. yeah we, I mean, we've... We've recorded here a couple of times in the past, but I mean, we can really tell like our love and appreciation is just keeps jumping every time we come back. <laughs> yeah. And then just recently, it became untapped, verified. And I actually talked to the bartender while while ordering beers now yeah. before we started recording. Uh, if he felt any different, and he actually did, he felt like more people came to the bar like pre-prepared and. Uh, uh, focused. Yeah. I want that. Yeah. I want that. I want that. And he said it actually has given him a little bit more time to talk to the novices, the ones that say, I don't know what I'm going to get. He now has a little bit more time. Like yeah. just, it, it, all it takes is a few minutes to educate someone. Well, like this is a session IPA. This is blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, I was talking with, uh, with Maya and she said that like, it's an experiment. They're going to do it for a year, see how it goes. But she said just like, it's kind of crazy because sometimes we'll put something on tap and then like within minutes of putting on tap and it shows up on, on, on yeah, un untapped, people just run in and be like, I need to try this beer. <laughs> that is amazing. Where, where they wouldn't have ever before and maybe yeah. there'd be some stuff that would languish for a while because you know, you didn't get around to, uh, to knowing it was here. Exactly, like nerds like me, I would refresh the feed at this place to see if anyone had checked in anything. Yeah. But that would require someone to discover it, buy it, try it and, tick and yeah. rate well, it. Well, fortunately we have some pretty reliable uh, <laughs> untapped people that that are here almost every it feels like they're here like every other day i don't know if lasse and leonard listen to the podcast <laughs> hi lasse and leonard yeah. we're talking about you <laughs> but you kind of like go in and just look like oh lasse and leonard are out today where are they drinking and it's like all right there's new stuff here new stuff here new stuff there <laughs> so should we try the first beer sure let's get yeah, in so the, the first brewery beer. is pentridge yeah and they've been around like on cans on web shops and stuff yeah For and uh, almost two, two years yeah yeah, but but the, I think I've had the most Pentridge as d at this very venue. Yeah, because they usually have a like it feels like they have a keg on at some point all the time. I think like but, they have at, at least one keg all the time. Yeah, yeah, it feels like, and maybe maybe it comes and goes. Maybe there's a few weeks in between, but because I think it's, 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 it's all the time. It's when they buy the Overtone and the Pentridge, they always have at least yeah. one of those breweries, one of each on top. And, and Pentridge is um, Scottish or Irish? I think they are uh, from Salford even. If only there was some way to look that up, but there's like yeah. on the last yeah. no way to, to tell these things. My, it, they, Dor Dorbyshire, England. Okay, so they're 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 UK beer. Yes. Okay. And the beer I got was Saint Monday, which is a about ten percent uh, Scottish wee heavy. Mm. Um, I love wee heavy. It's one of my favorite styles. I don't know why. 
I just think it's a lot of fun to drink and you don't see them that often. So whenever they come out, I'm always like, oh, let's get one of those. I've been thinking about this because we've talked about overly sweet barley wines mm -hmm. that we kind of don't, we don't want them to be so sweet. Yeah. But Scottish Wee Heavy is really sweet, but it, it still really kind of works. Yeah, I think for me, the Wee Heavies, when they're barrel aged, it's like the perfect combination because it I takes totally that, it takes that sweetness from the Wee Heavy and it marries it with those amazing, uh, you know, bourbon, vanilla tones. Um, and then I think that's why like Backwoods Bastards have been always one of my favorite beers because it takes the wee heavy and barrel ages it and it's Isn't just Isn't that like, an old ale? Mm. Oh, you know, I think maybe. I don't remember anymore. The, the, there <laughs> is some fine difference there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but now that we've tried this, we didn't do the, the, the mm. nice uh, clinking of glasses, yeah. but wouldn't you say that this is a little bit too sweet? It is. It but is on the cane sugar kind of flavor, but there's a, a bit of a roasty smokiness to it on the back notes that yeah. I think keeps it from being uh, like just pure sugar water. I would say there's also like some kind of molasses in it. Mm -hmm. It's like keeps it sweet, but not too sweet. Yeah. It, it can be too sweet, as you say, but this one, as Stephen said, it's got a nice back tone to it that balances it all out. Yeah. So roll. I, I agree with you on uh, smokiness and roastiness. Also get a little bit of like coffee uh, uh, flavor. Yeah. I think it's quite, ni quite nice. Yeah, the, the, like up front you're like, oh, that's that's like pure saccharin. Uh, it's it's really sweet. But then it like it met, it just kills, it just dies almost immediately, and you get this like light smoky roastedness to it, which I wasn't expecting. Um, I think it's it's really really good. Do you want to know why it's sweet? Yes. Well, it even contains maple syrup. Oh, which is interesting because it doesn't taste dry. For no, me, mo maple beers really are pretty dry finish. Um, but this, I don't get that at all. I think this has got, it's got a lot, so much going for it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's really, really nice. Yeah, I, uh, I think this is a really, really nice beer. So what would you guys give this? I am going to give it a 4.25. Ooh. Strong 4.25 there. I'm on a 4. Ah. I, I don't know what... Uh, I, I need to try it again. It might be because of the sweetness for you up front. Yeah. But I think... But I think I, for me, if it was just sweet and all you got was sweet, it would just be like... I mean, it would probably be like a 3.25. But because... Of the flavors that you get afterwards, it's just like, oh, there's so much happening here. I wasn't expecting, and that's kind of, for me. That's kind of exciting. Yeah, <laughs> like it lingers so long in your mouth. Yeah. in a good way. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like a uh, like a German Rausch beer in, oh, in the final what? finish. I, I don't no, agree with that. It's not. It's not bacony. It's not like like super super smoked. But there is like this like smokier edge to it that I just completely took me by surprise. Stefan, I added up it. Take another sip. Now you get the booze as well because I didn't get the first sips, but now you get the booze, which makes it even better. Better? <laughs> okay, I'll stretch myself to a really strong four, almost a four twenty-five. All right, almost. Yeah. You don't have to. No, more than, you know, more than, I don't want be, to be bear, wrong. There's <laughs> individual taste. You don't no. have to agree with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like, we are correct. Exactly. There's <laughs> like one we, we, we tried to. I, we, we all tried a beer earlier, and you guys loved it, and I was just like, I do not like this at all. And it was a and we, we, strawberry cheesecake imperial stout, and I was just like, "This is not that good." And you were like, "It's amazing," and I'm no, like, "Well, it, it tastes like stout and frozen strawberries." No, it was like ice cream. It, it, just it, didn't, ice cream it didn't taste like that at all. And Liar! I don't. I don't think like you understand what strawberry ice cream tastes like. <laughs> well, I, I won't try the Gabby Glass Fair fucking Sweden, and that's uh, not even ice cream. <laughs> Uh, and that beer was from the same brewery as our next beer. All right, so our next beer is from Hidden Springs. It's called Life on Standby. And this is a barley wine, I believe. Aged on apple brandy barrels. Oh, that Aged explains so much. Apple brandy barrels. Okay. Because I just tried so it. So the Calvados, um, the Calvados um, barrel aged beers or apple brandy beers are not my favorite barrel aging style. I, uh, I usually find them way overly um, uh, boozy. And in this case, slightly acidic. Yes. Um, okay, so Brother wants to be pretty sweet, and um, I don't think this is very sweet. But I will say, well, I don't. In, I didn't enjoy the upfront, like the first swallow. The afterwards, it's quite apple brandy yeah. pleasant. It's yeah. kind of weird. <laughs> I would say this is probably the most apple brandy I've ever gotten in a barley wine ever. Mm -hmm. And then I, I tried many of them, but like the officer said, it's like almost pure apple brandy, more or less. Yeah, no, no, the I, the only redeeming quality for me for this beer is the aftertaste, because yeah, I don't yeah. think it tastes particularly good 
Um, it's just kind of thin and uh, watery and kind of there's a hard alcohol heat to the, to the front. And then afterwards you get this really nice, pleasant apple brandy kind of flavor over your mouth where you're like, oh, that was actually pretty good. So Stefan, you can give this bit three ratings. One for the beer itself, one for the barrel, and one overall. I won't do that. I'll just give it one overall <laughs> because that seems way too complicated for me. Um, this is really tough for me because I don't really enjoy this beer that much. And it's only by pure happenstance, I think, that I enjoy the final notes. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to give it a 325. 375 for me, somewhere around there. Yeah, and I'm on with Martin's picture because uh, I think still it's a pretty okay barley wine, but the barrels weigh it up and makes it a lot better. So yeah, a 375 but a weak one. Yeah, I think the, I think the barrels kind of maybe drag it down a little bit and kill any of the barley wine characters to it because I don't get any barley wine notes. I just get kind of a watery thinness to it that's just got this huge alcohol heat that kind of like kind of overwhelms me a bit and it comes up through my sinuses and it's like Ooh, boozy, and then it's like oh well that's a really nice aftertaste though. Yeah, it's but it's fun even though this one didn't uh, tickle our fancy that much. It's it is. Amazing to see Hidden Springs on tap in Malmo. And remember, especially barrel aged Hidden Springs. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and no, I'm super excited to try it. Um, I remember pre corona, me and uh, one other friend, Pontus was supposed to join, but he got sick. We went uh, over to Denmark just to go to a Hidden Springs tap takeover at uh, Think Fermentorum. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, that felt like, wow, how are we ever, <laughs> how are we so lucky to have to be able to go to Copenhagen and try Hidden Springs on tap? Wow. I remember, like, it wasn't even that long ago when it was like, um, what's the uh, the founder's um, stout that's really popular? KBS. KBS. Or CBS. KBS. Yeah. When, or can, Canadian when, or Kentucky? Well, when KBS, Kentucky yeah. brand, Kentucky yeah. uh, Stout, uh, first came out on taps here, it was like, holy shit, we're getting KBS on tap. And then uh, and then Savoy got CBS on tap. Yeah. And we're like, holy shit, we got CBS on tap. And now those beers are so far in our rear view mirror yes. that now we're just like, holy shit, we got Hidden Springs on tap. But and then the, and within like two years, we're going to be like, oh my God, now we got this Fro brewery on oh tap. God, now we got Frosty Beers, Imperial Stouts on yeah. tap. <laughs> side product barrel age stuff. <gasps> Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if, if, if that ha was to happen at this point. I mean, yeah. we're getting so many things now. Because um, so many, I don't, I don't know what the, how things are flowing and ebbing. We used to see Westbrook all the time. Yeah. And now that's yeah. like, you never see them anymore. But talking about um, the good beers on tap here in Malmö, we had uh, a few weeks back, you remember the keg they got at Beerditch? Uh, I think the one and only in uh, Sweden. Oh, the... the uh, double dry up King Su from Topping Goliath. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Like that, having that on keg in Sweden, like, how is that even possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Beerditch is uh, another beer bar we're going to revisit soon. Um, and they also have always have just amazing stuff on tap. Uh, They're, yeah, they, they have good... Um, uh, wine, enough wine. Yeah. They have good bottle list. Yeah, thank yeah, you. I would say their bottle list is, cool, prob coolers. is probably the best. Um, like they are joint best with the uh, Bishop. It's, it's different, different though. It's Beardage different. Though. is limited by their the few amount of taps, which yep. makes this place better. Now, the purchases here are just crazy. So I would I would say Bishop's is better yeah, than Beardage. Yeah. Right, but Beardish is if you want to go and both have food and beer, I would say I would go to Beardish over Bishops because you have you know the, have the yeah. smurders over there that they are probably the best ones you can find yeah. outside of Denmark. I haven't tried the food here in a long time, but did, I think that's the that would be the kicker. Yeah, uh, I would say bottle selection. Uh, if you want to just try like cans and and stuff, Beardish is better. If you want to try higher end stuff, I think. Bishop's Arms is better. But I have to add, since since this place got verified, I've looked through the like bottle and the can list, and there are so many beers that have been here for so long that I had no idea about. Yeah, I know. So th their bottle and can list has been way better for longer than we knew because we didn't well, look. Could, yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't you look at the like bottom uh, floor furthest in behind more, other more bottles. Than you didn't do. I've done it many times. Pontus, Pontus is a savant when it comes to yeah, knowing, knowing about bottles that are not visible in any beer <laughs> fridge and are not on any list. No, it comes to me 
asking the, per the staff too many questions during a too long time. So like, uh, I think I've been here a few times and the staff, like I've ended up going around for like 15, 20 minutes in the back room just to find a bottle that I haven't tried before. That is good. <laughs> wow. And they will and they will tell Pontus, we got in this and this and this that we haven't put on like uh, display yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you ever come here uh, and... Find Pontus. Find Pontus first. No, if uh, Pontus no. isn't here, which happens from time to time. Find Alan. Find Alan. Yeah. Alan, is, Alan is amazing. He's, uh, he's usually behind the, behind the bar. But uh, they have a, a glassed-in wall uh, right across from the bar, right behind the seating area, where you can see all of their bottles, basically. All of their kind of sours and, and uh, better quality uh, stouts that they have. At least have. a little selection. Yeah, yeah, a little selection. So you don't have to kind of search through, the, look look behind them and try to interpret what are the bottles that you see um, behind them. Because I remember spending many times going like, all right, what's that bottle? No, no, not that one, the one beside that one. All right, I don't want that. What about that one over there? And I feel like monopolizing so much of the of their time that this is really making things a lot easier. I can go, oh, I want this thing, and then it's up to them to figure out where the hell they put it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Which is a lot more fun. All right, well, let's wrap this up. Um, Summary, Bishop's Arms Gustav Alds Tor in Malmo is amazing. Yes, yes, I would say one of, one of the best uh, beer bars in all of Sweden. Um, certainly in league with uh, the best things in um, Gothenburg and uh, Stockholm. Yes. Yeah, I think the only thing that could beat this is Akurat, and that's... that's. Mm, I think Man on the Moon is better than Akurat. You mean Akurat before Stena sold it? No, they still have a super deep seller. Yeah, but it's not the same. No, no but they still now we have super, he works at Sumtranskan instead, which is also a really, really, really good bar. I, it's a really, really great German beer bar uh, that always has Cantheon on tap. But I like, I like Man on the Moon, I think it's a great uh, beer bar as well. They always have crazy good taps. And also Press Club, no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never been to Presque. I've never been there. Yeah. But they were the other bar who had uh, Tilquin on tap when this place had all of them. Yeah, and they, they, they only had, a, I think they only got ten, got 10 out of 12 kegs as well, so they didn't even have all the kegs. Ah. And they, and they didn't have enough taps to put all of them on at once. No. Fluff. That's tough. That's, that's <laughs> woof. And then, um, and then if you go to Gothenburg, What's the, I can't think of any of the beer bars are now, but there's the one that's the pizza place. Brewer's Bar. Brewer's Bar that everyone that's goes Thierry to. Thierry Yeah. Which is, I've always found it to be good, not great. Yeah, I see. <laughs> that, that, that's me kind of, the whole Gothenburg bar scene, kind of good, not great. Yeah. Well, it's really good for a pub crawl. Oh, yeah. it's great for a pub crawl. But it's not the best for going to one place and just staying there and drinking amazing all night long. Yep. But now I remember, Stafon Linné. Stafon Linné, I've never been there, but I've seen people drinking Griffontaine in there. Yeah, and they also have a, a good selection of Cantillon and okay. stuff. So like, nice. they, they, are, they, are, they want to go if you want to drink some nice beers. In Gothenburg? Yeah. Okay. Well, one day we'll have to do some recording from, we'll have to do a Gothenburg weekend. Yes. And, as they call it, the Forgotten Weekend. Lost Weekend, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, <laughs> was the name of the movie where the guy was an alcoholic and just... Uh, got too drunk and forgot what happened all weekend. Ah. <laughs> Very famous uh, film where they lost uh, certain reels and just had to go in and put stills in where things were supposed to have happened. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. All right, well, let's wrap this up then. Uh, you can find us online. Oh, Pontus, thanks again for joining us. Well, uh, thank you for having me. I don't think we ever asked this, but uh, is there any uh, anywhere you want people to find you online? Do we want to track no, you on please, drinking? Please, please, please don't. Please don't, please don't find you? All right. If anything, you can find me on Untapped. I'm called Lord Potato there. And that, All that's right. probably so, so Lord Potato on Untapped. Uh, friend him there and then watch him uh, slowly die of cirrhosis, like we all are. Um, so until next time, you can find us online at what's on tap podcast.com, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, Spotify. Spotify, and wherever you find amazing podcast you can find us as well so until next time keep drinking your dum-dums <laughs> <laughs>